you what, this was pure love, no strings attached. In the presence of this love, literally began to touch the depth of who I was. I stood there and these waves continued in their intensity and power until I could not even speak. All I could do was just receive as he literally filled me up to overflowing with his presence and love. Every part of me seemed to be coming back to life. Where it felt like a burnt out shell of a man, his presence began to fill up and literally heal my inner man. As I stood there, I thought to myself, God, if you can love me so much, can I possibly step in and see you? Somehow, if I could step into the light and I could see you, you could tell me the meaning and truth to life and I would know who God was. I asked that question in my heart, God, can I see you? He didn't say no and so I stepped into this radiance. As I stepped in, I was completely immersed in this radiant light and continued to walk in. Right in the center, it opened up. As it opened up, the first thing I saw was a, was a man's feet, bare feet, with dazzling white garments around his ankles. I quickly lifted my eyes up and saw the most radiant garment on a man. I looked up and saw the chest, chest. His arms were out like this. As I looked towards his face, his face literally was emanating the most radiant, most powerful light. It seemed to be coming from the pores of his skin as, as this radiance and purity seemed to emanate and hide his entire face and features. It seemed like the light that was coming from his face was so much brighter and so much more intense that it made the light that surrounded him look dull. As I stood there, I thought, that must be God. Who could have a face that shines ten times brighter than the sun, has garments that are like garments of light, and is surrounded by a radiance that seems to fill the universe. As I walked closer, wanting to see his eyes and his form, I could see his hair, white, glowing like in a breeze, but his face still seemed to be shrouded by this brilliance. I moved closer and closer, wanting to see more. I came up literally within two feet from him, about to penetrate the light to see his face, it seemed as though he didn't want me to see his face because he moved. As he moved to one side, the light that was around him moved with him and directly behind him, the same shape as the tunnel I'd travelled down, was a brand, like, like a cave entrance opening out into a brand new planet. As I stood there, I looked two feet in front of me, I saw green grass moving off into a distance and I could see a crystal clear stream, trees on either side of it. I moved over to the right, I saw meadows and fields going off into rolling green hills, mountains, clear skies. I moved over to my left, I saw fields and flowers and trees scattered through it. As I looked, every part of me is going, what is this place? It's like, it's like the Garden of Eden or what is this? And I looked at the grass, I saw no ragwort, no thistle, no buttercup. No, no, nothing that we use to spray for in New Zealand on the farm. And I'm looking, and it's perfect. There's no rust, no disease, no death in the pastures. The rye grass is waving in like a gentle breeze, and the light that was upon the presence of God is emanating right through the creation. The whole of the planet's creation seems to be giving off life and light. As I'm staring at it, everything in my heart is going, I belong here. Why wasn't I born here in the first place? Why did I always feel like a stranger on this planet, almost like an alien? Why wasn't I born there? God showed me later, you have to be born again. I used to be in to save the planet and save the whale. Well, here I saw a brand new creation, totally untouched, going before me. In me, I knew that if I stepped in, there'd be no more death, no more sickness, no more suffering, that I was standing at the threshold of eternity. I'm just about to enter in and explore. I mean, everything in me is just restrained not to step in and explore. An incredible excitement in me. And his radiance and presence seems to come before me as if to block the way. I thought, why is he blocking the way? Then he spoke to me. Within the light, he said, Ian, now that you've seen, do you wish to step in or do you wish to return? 
what would you do? Somehow, by a deathbed prayer, I come into the presence of God and I was standing at the threshold of eternity and I knew that if I entered in there, there would be no more, no, no more suffering. Or come back to here. Apocalypse now. <laughs> I mean, you have to be stupid to figure out that this planet's kind of doing a little bit of a nosedive. I mean, I am I'm thinking, return back? No, I don't want to return back. I wish to step in. He didn't move. I thought he needs more convincing. <laughs> I said, God, I am not married. I have got no children and no responsibility to come back for. At the time, I wasn't. He still didn't move. I said, God, I have got no mortgage. I owe no one anyone, anything. <laughs> no bank manager chasing me. <laughs> and I, I don't, I'm not going to leave debt. Look, there's nothing to return for. He still didn't move. And I stood there and said, God, you're the first one who has unconditionally loved and accepted me. In my life, I have never known anyone on earth who has loved me like you have. Your love has touched the depth of my heart. Your love and presence has melted my heart of stone. You've touched me like no one has ever touched me before. I want to be with you and stay with you. I don't want to return. He still didn't move. I thought, right, I'm going to say goodbye to this cruel world, look back and then step in. I knew that if he loved me that much, he would allow me to step past his presence into eternity. I looked back, and as soon as I looked back to say goodbye, cruel world, in a clear vision next to the tunnel was my mother. As I saw her, I realized that there was one person on this earth that had loved me. And that was my dear mother. Not only had she loved me, but she had prayed for me every day of my life and tried to show this young, stubborn, arrogant young man that God was real. And I said, Mum, science and evolution, all this proves it's wrong. And my mother said, Son, I'm praying for you. I love you. And I realised her face had appeared in an ambulance that night and given me the opportunity to respond to God. And I thought to myself, if I step through into heaven tonight, I knew I'd never be able to communicate with her the fact that I had made it. And I thought, how could I selfishly do that and leave my mother to bury my corpse and think for all intents and purposes that her son went to hell without any faith, without any belief in God? And I looked back at her and thought, I can't cause her any more suffering. I wish to return, and I turned back to God and said, God, I wish to return to tell my mother that what she believes in is real. I do not know how I came here, but if I go back, I will find out where this place is, and I will come back again, whether anyone believes me or not. And whether you believe me or not, I know that if I was to die right now, I'd be in the presence of God and step through. As I stood there, God said to me, Son, if you wish to return, you must see things in a new light. I thought, new light, things in new light. Ah, oh, I must see through the light of love, the light of your presence and spirit, the light of forgiveness and joy. I must see from an eternal perspective, not a temporary earthly perspective. I must see from the eyes of God, from his perspective, not mine. I said, God, how do I do that? I looked back and next to my mother was a vision of my father, my brother and my sister and literally thousands upon thousands of people whose faces seemed to fade into the distance because I couldn't recognize them. I said, God, who are they? He said, son, if you don't return, these people will most likely never have a chance to hear about me because they'll never step foot inside a church to find out. The fact that you're in a church tonight on a Thursday evening is a miracle for some of you. Many of you have said in your heart, I won't be a hypocrite and never come to church again. I was in exactly the same position. I looked back and said, God, I don't know these people. I love my mother. I desire to return for them. The Lord said, I love these people. I desire that they come in and be with me. I said, God, how do I return down a tunnel into darkness and back into my physical form? He said, son, tilt your head. Now feel a little.